patience, and thank you for coming at this bright and early hour. Uh, stay tuned, second annual Second Geographies Conference. Um, we had a good day yesterday. I think this will be a good start to the day today. Uh, we're going to have a <laughs> panel discussion, a round table, on interdisciplinarity, challenges of translation and coexistence. Uh, we have a few key questions that uh, the panelists were thinking about. The three questions are, what are, well, three main questions, and there were a number of kind of sub-questions, but the three main questions are, what are the limits and possibilities of interdisciplinarity? How does the theory and language of previous training affect work in a new discipline? And do we need to be interdisciplinary? So I'll, uh, our, our six panelists will each talk for about five minutes or so. I'll be keeping track. If you go over six, I'll kind of stand up and, and cough or something. <laughs> um, and we'll go just from, from right to left, if that's OK. So we'll, and I'll e introduce each of you as you're about to give your talk. And then we'll afterwards have a little bit of inter-panelist discussion. And then we'll open it up to the floor. So first off, we have Nicholas Murphy, who's a PhD in English and Theater Studies uh, here at Guelph. He has a McMaster's in Cultural Studies and Critical Theory, and his MA thesis was an interdisciplinary collaboration with the musicians Jermaine Liu and Mark Zerowinski, theoretically engaging with diverse fields of improvised music, experimental videography, performance studies, zoology, photography, critical theory, and something I've never even heard of, interval studies. Yeah, it's like a music thing. Um, OK, uh, thank you for that. Uh, big masters, it never, never gets old. Um, OK, um, I was thinking there's a few ways I could, I wasn't anticipating to actually begin. I was hoping to have some reverberations <laughs> from, from down, down around there. Um, Okay, so um, I'll, I'll attempt to try and address the, the three questions um, probably backwards, um, <laughs> usually how it goes. I'm going to open up with, I think, a really interesting uh, quote. It's just a, it's a paragraph from uh, Lewis Gordon's uh, Disciplinary Decadence. So uh, to, to set it up, um, he, he talks about um, there being So um, uh, he initially he talks about disciplines as being sort of in um, when disciplines reach a kind of crisis moment. There's kind of uh, three moves that traditionally, and he's writing from an American tradition that they'll go through. There's a move from uh, sort of uh, naturalism or towards naturalism, which will try and make assertions about knowledge, um, validity of knowledge, by appealing to the natural sciences. Then there'll be a move to say historicism, where there'll be an appeal to say facts, uh, there being some sort of factual basis for what they're doing. And then the third move is to move into language, where they kind of um, go for sort of an objective sort of uh, disciplinary to sort of um, allow the whole process to recur again. So um, he then says that the cyclical nature of this process of moving through naturalism to historicism and then on to valorizations of language as an independent agent provides the illusion of permanence. <laughs> It is as though thought will always go through such patterns as though drawn by pure necessity. What is often forgotten about society and living systems of thought is that everything living must die. <coughs> sorry, and all things, and all things, and, uh, sorry, and all living things go through processes before they die. Such a process is decay. It is the it is the exhausting moments as the end nears. Although it has correlates and biological notions, the sense of life and death transcends the biological, and that it pertains as well to ideas. It is thus not a naturalism, since even that notion of is a form of idea. But the basis, though, which even its own notions come in and go out of being. In this sense, it is the haunting presence of absence in all things that exist, including every human being. So uh, for me, there's a couple of things that I find really provocative about that statement. First, the illusion of permanence. And second, that ideas themselves are living things that go through processes of being alive, decaying, dying, coming back again. Um, it 
experiences for me in interdisciplinarity, there have always been sort of two, I guess, problems. Is there, is there a chalk? Is there a Actually, there's, there's a picture kind of like illustrate for me two sort of approaches that I've seen people take. So there's this is maybe one approach, and then there's kind of this is the other. I'll explain what that means. Um, <laughs> um, um, there's um, talking to friends and colleagues. You've got all these different disciplines, and, and to maybe contextualize a discipline, the origin of that word is to, to educate, which is the Latin origin. So, and then to educate, to go back even further, meant to draw out of it, was a word used to describe the midwives do, a dukara. So there's these two sorts of, I think, approaches that you see to interdisciplinarity. One, you've got, say, one discipline, and you've got another discipline, and they're going to work. But there's a distinct space between them. And I, I think that's where maybe the inter is going to come in because that's always trying to address this in-between space. So do we have an interdisciplinary where there's two distinct disciplines, boundaries clearly set, their disciplines clearly delineated, and they're going to approach some particular problem, do a particular type of work or a type of research, finish the research, move on, the discipline is sound and safe, all the rest of it. Or do we have the second one where there's a kind of melding that happens uh, with the disciplines themselves and say you've got somebody in say plant biology doing work with somebody from performance studies. What happens with the language that they're using and how do they translate that language into whatever type of work that they're doing, research, if it's a paper, things like that. Is there a kind of reverberation that happens from that type of exchange that carries over into the discipline itself. The other question I have about this in-between space, obviously, is, you know, what, um, what goes on in, in that space between these disciplines? I think one of the limits of interdisciplinarity within the university is, is a material one. I've heard stories of colleagues who, you know, they've, they've talked reverently about, you know, different departments and different areas getting together to collaborate on particular types of projects, conferences, things like that. But when it time to get funding, they were all stabbing each other in the back. So I think that's a huge problem with having interdisciplinarity within the university structure because there's a, a huge material constraint. And so to get back to this impermanence thing, it's really, it's, the interdisciplinarity, num number two, which is the one I think is, is maybe what discipline should strive, should, should strive for. I mean, it, it, it really doesn't, there's, there's no guarantees when you're working in that type of field. And um, it's, it's risky and there's a lot of uncertainty. And a lot of the time when you're doing that work, there's a lot of stuff going on that you just, you can't, you can't control. Because there's, there's a lot of knowledge there that's very slippery. And so, I think to exist in that space, you have to be okay with not knowing, first of all. You have to be okay with not being an expert because you're, you're engaging in a field that maybe you didn't have any prior training in, maybe you don't understand the language of. But that's one of the most exciting things for me anyways in engaging in these particular types of things because then you know, there's maybe a, a core to what I'm doing or some sort of motivation, but these other types of questions start to sort of layer on that core and the work that you start, start to do start to do, I think, starts to break down a lot of those boundaries. But again, I, I, I really, I'm really cautious about thinking about this model of interdisciplinarity actually being able to be present predominantly in the university because of this material condition. So um, that's, that's fine.